My name is Maggie Hill. I'll be the moderator for this evening. I'm a current um, graduate student in the program, just having graduated from the BSPS program, so an alumni, alumni as well. And I'm really excited to ask our alumni panel some questions later. So I'll pass it off to Tara. Good to see you again. Hey, Maggie, it's always good to see you. Um, so yeah, my name is Tara Marie Joanna. Um, I graduated from the BSPS program in 2019. I've done a variety of things since graduating over four years ago. I worked as a medical assistant at a doctor's office. I came back to URI to do my master's in med chem. Um, I spent a year in, a little bit over a year, in pharmaceutical consulting in New York. And now I'm actually a first year medical student at Johns Hopkins. So I'm here in Baltimore right now. Awesome, thank you for joining us. How about Adatola? how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. Um, well, my name is Adatola. I am a recent graduate as well from the BSBS program. I graduated, graduated recently in May. Um, and I currently work at Amgen as a manufacturing associate for the upstream and downstream purification. So it's been like, I basically feel like I just took a summer off and went back to school. So that's what my life is going on right now. Awesome. And how about you, Dean? Hi, uh, yeah, thanks. My name's Dean. Um, I also graduated in 2019. I was in Terry's class. And um, ever since then, the fall of 2019, I started a PhD program in pharmacology. And now I'm a fifth year um, to see you and shoots in Colorado. So I live in Denver now. Um, yeah, it's going well. So. Great. Thank you for joining us this evening. And then, uh, Professor Edmonds, are we waiting on one more or have they already logged on? We were waiting on Emily M, but I don't see her logged in and I don't want to hold people up any longer. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, sounds like a plan. Well, this is more of a informal discussion. Feel free to post some questions if you have any for our alumni panel in the chat. Um, I'll try to check that periodically, um, but just kind of having it flow. Uh, if you have the panelists, if you have any um, pointers that you want to hop on to and keep the conversation going, there's no set specific questions, but I do have a couple to keep us prompted. So starting off, um, you know, a couple students on this panel um, might be trying to decide between degree programs or um, what colleges and universities. Um, so what Pro, were, what was the intention of coming to URI for you all on the panel? And any one of you can start, whoever feels up for the question. I don't mind starting. Um, so for me, URI is definitely a place that I call home. Um, it's where my siblings go to school. It's where my dad teaches. But for me, I think I was still able to make a cognizant decision. Um, after taking several classes in the program and really sticking it out with the farm side program, I knew that I wanted to go to medical school for maybe my first year of um, actually since high school. Um, and the pharmaceutical sciences program, especially at URI, is so good at preparing you for that. Um, it's a top curriculum. It gives you pretty much all the pre-med requirements. It gives you built-in research experience that's already like tailored into your curriculum, lots of extracurricular opportunities as well. Um, so it really was a no brainer for me to stick it out at URI and to finish my um, undergrad degree at URI. And then I really did like it so much that I did come back for my master's as well. Um, and it really is a testament to how good of a program it is and how um, well it can prepare you for, I guess, the real world after, whether you do go into industry or you want to go on to further graduate school. So after my master's, I'm also in med school now. So just racking up as many degrees as I can at the, at the moment. Um, well, for me, URI was actually my top choice because I initially wanted to go to the PharmD program. So everything about pharmacy was so um, popular and like URI is just known for its pharmacy program in general, whether it was like PharmD or the BPS program. But I'm pretty sure when I started my PharmD program, I don't know if the BPS P, like the VPS program was like, it was still like on the rocks in my head. And then after like doing Farm D, I was I realized that maybe it's like Farm Sci, and I just love the flexibility that the College of Pharmacy provided with me to be able to explore Farm Sci while doing Farm D. 
um and like making my full switch to the farm side program really opened my eyes in terms of the flex flexibility the degree holds um like the way the College of Pharmacy prepared me for any type of um like industry if I wanted to go back to my master's program like it per like the classes prepared me so well that like going to work right now just feels like I'm like in school again like I just feel like I'm back in Avedision just going to school but in a larger scale so I like I really appreciate the URI for one being my home because I am from Providence but also to like being able to prepare me for things that I didn't even think that they would be able to prepare me for yeah that's great so I chose um URI I'm also from Rhode Island so it made a lot of sense for me to go to URI I think there was a phase in my life where I wanted to like explore and look at other programs but Finding BPS is really great at CSPS because, yeah, uh, like, you know, I was saying it's very versatile, super flexible. Um, I think I sort of knew that I wanted to go into research um, when I when I was starting college. And so it was a really great program for me. Um, I really liked learning about different types of sciences and different like options for graduate school that were out there. So learning about medicinal chemistry and like in silico drug discovery was really cool a lot of the biochemical assays that we learned about and yeah just you really get a taste of all of the options that are out there so I thought it was a really good program definitely prepared me for graduate school um, and the school itself is just in a really great place um, being close to the beach and a beautiful campus and felt like there were so many research opportunities too as an undergrad which really helped for the future being on like on publications and learning about that process. Yeah, and I think all of your experiences where you ended up after URI is really a testament to the diversity and versatility that this program offers. Um, but you kind of mentioned, um, all of you mentioned that there is a broad portfolio that you touch on and those could be through curriculum, professional orgs, um, student experiences. So how about we start with the curriculum? Um, what classes did you take that opened your eyes to different career paths in pharmacy and how did you use those to advance your role? Um, for me personally, I remember two classes that were like so prominent in what I wanted to like do with my future. It was one, the BPS 250 class with the, um, Professor Edmonds because like there are so many new people every week describing their what they like did with their degree. And at the time I actually took this class while I was a senior. So like this class was tailored mostly for sophomores, but as a senior taking that um, class, I was just like, I'm late. Like I won't be able to, I was just in my head a lot thinking that, I don't know, um, I don't have as many internships as others if they're sophomores. Like I just didn't start fresh from farm side. And I just remember being into like the BPS 250 course and just thinking, okay, like, like a breath of fresh air because it allowed me to like sit down and actually just focus strictly on my future like no other like exams just focusing on my professional development and my career choice like that's what I'm highly grateful for and then my second course was the another lab I took my senior year which is BPS 451 with Dr. Burton and I forget the other professor's name I don't know if you remember that that'd be Maggie or if you took that but I forget his other the other professor's name, but that lab really introduced a lot of the hands-on experiences that I like I'm doing right now in terms of research, sample analysis, and making sure I can write um professionally, making sure I can analyze things, making sure I know how to work the proper equipment, like like HBLCs, the like chromatographs, like just making sure I'm at least if I'm not proficient in something, I'm aware of what I might be able to do. So those are two courses that I'm really fond of. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Dr. Chen and uh, Dr. Burton's course was so instrumental to my uh, career as well. Yeah, I'm gonna build on that. Um, I think 
What's great about the BSPS program is that while we have a lot of professional electives that are very much related to um, pharmaceutical sciences in the related field, it also offers us a lot of flexibility to incorporate other things. So I also did like an honors program. I did minors and other courses. But in terms of pharmaceutical science courses that I took, um, I took a course called Medicinal Plants with Dr. Serum in my senior year. And that was a really good intersection of like natural medicines and uh, medicinal chemistry. And it incorporated a little bit also of some of the techniques that you would do to like elucidate like drug structures. And then it we built on that course really nicely. I, in the spring of my senior year, I took a course called Natural Products Drugs, which kind of goes into, um, it kind of takes that a step further. It goes a little bit into drug development. Um, again, some of the techniques and methods to be able to elucidate drug structures, a little bit of the history of some of the drugs that are currently around, or especially the ones that are derived from um, medicinal plants, whether, you know, like fully or like semi-synthetically. Um, so I really liked both of those courses. And I didn't realize that I was going to be doing a master's in medicinal chemistry a little bit like a year over a year later. But those two courses were pivotal for what I built on when I came back to URI to do a master's in medicinal chemistry and pharmacognosy, um, which is like the study of medicinal plants and, you know, the chemistry behind that. So it really set a good foundation for me in that sense. And now even in medical school, the drug development um, coursework that we were able to like cover has been really helpful for me now in school when we cover sometimes the history of certain medications or like you know some of the drug development processes and then integrating that with like human physiology so like how does the body work what drugs can we use on it where did this drug come from how do we develop this drug it all comes full circle together um yeah i think i, I definitely agree with everyone that's gone you know i just um i really like that bsps provided uh, like principles of pharmacology, medicinal chemistry, you know, these courses that I didn't think I'd be able to get until like a graduate program. So they're really cool to like experience that in undergrad and do stuff that I was super interested in that wasn't just, you know, electives. Um, my favorite course though, Dr. King taught, it, I don't know the course title, but it was using like in, in silico drug modeling um, and like to study like ligand, you know, receptor um docking interactions and stuff like that and so i really love that because it was it just showed me that you know the program is like pursuing the teaching of really cutting edge ideas and technology that's in the field available um and so yeah just being able to learn about like everything that's available um online and how we can model that on a computer um i was always really fascinated by that so, great course yeah, that's a great course. Um, I think that that's actually a graduate course, but I'm sure that some BSPS students could take that as an elective. And if they're interested in the ABM program, that's another thing that they could pursue. So that's a great point. Um, awesome coursework. Uh, I'd like to hear more about some of the laboratory um, experiences, or if you guys did any experiential learning with any faculty members. I'd love to hear more about that. I can start for that one. Um, so I worked in Abe Kavor's lab for um, four years, actually. He kept me on all four years, which is really awesome. Um, we were studying the mechanisms of dopamine receptor trafficking and how antipsychotic drugs interact with these receptors in disease profiles like schizophrenia. And so it was really cool to have that hands-on experience. I was welcomed into his lab as an undergrad, which I really just kind of cost the lab money, you know, as an undergrad. It wasn't I was really being the one poured into rather than pouring into the lab. And so I think people that did internships in labs though also had similar stories. Like PIs welcomed them in. They wanted undergrads. They wanted to teach them and mentor them. And it was overall a really positive experience for me. Um, my mentor at the time was really encouraging and he, he wanted me to get my name on a paper, which was cool. Um, and so they sort of had that vision for me. It was more than just, a student coming in and cleaning dishes. It was like, hey, this is really gonna help you if you have this on your CV in the future. And um, yeah, overall, it was a great experience. Yeah, I think echoing Dean's point, um, there really is something to be said about the faculty here at URI, how willing and how excited they are to have undergraduates in their labs um, and how much effort they really put in to really allowing us to develop our own projects. Um, so I ended up doing research in the Department of Chemistry, so in the building right across from the College of Pharmacy on campus. 
Um, it was after my sophomore year and I stayed on for a little bit over two years and I did polymer chemistry work. So it was very early stages of drug development. So if we think that we can take a drug and we want to deliver it to a certain part of the body, we might want to optimize the polymer delivery system for that. And so what we were doing was we were doing biodegradable polymers and kinetics of polymers and synthesis of it. And I absolutely loved it. I love chemistry. And I think that was a beautiful aspect that I was able to integrate my love of chemistry with also my love of human physiology and kind of thinking about the broader um, picture in that. I worked with Dr. Keysweater in his lab, and it wasn't just a really good mentorship from the PI, Dr. Keysweater, but it was also the graduate students in the lab or even some of the older undergraduate students. They were always so willing to teach um, and they were so willing to kind of like share um, in their projects and then kind of let you hop on to different projects, but also allowing you to nurture and develop your own. So within six weeks, um, I had already kind of established a project of my own and I was able to follow through with that. Um, I was also really lucky that I was on, I had my name on a paper within three months. I, I realized now that that's quite unusual when you join a lab, but it was just the right motivation that I needed, especially that in extrinsic motiva motivation that I got from seeing my name on a paper and maybe want to stay, do more work, get my name on another paper. And I did, I got my name on another paper by the time I graduated, but being able to build a project um, over the course of two years and then actually using that project for my honors um, thesis as well was absolutely wonderful. Just that continuous mentorship, development of skills, and whether it was my public speaking skills, presenting in a lab, being able to write and um, synthesize data, or just my polymerization skills, using an NMR, using a mass spec, all of it was it was really pivotal, I think, to my experiences then subsequently when I became a graduate student in medicinal chemistry um, in the College of Pharmacy. So I walked right back across the across the street back to the College of Pharmacy. And now even as a um, as a medical student, we cover things that, you know, we covered in the lab. Like I had an exam just two weeks ago where we covered NMR and mass spec. And it's stuff that I learned in my research lab back in undergrad. Um, for my research experience, um, I actually did it very relatively late compared to other people. It was my senior year and it was through the RI Embry program. So it wasn't technically through like an internship. It was through, um, the Embry program for the spring, not for the summer. Um, and I was able to work in Dr. Burton's lab and that was probably hands down one of like the most grateful experiences I've been able to like partake in in the College of Pharmacy mainly because I was so new to working in a lab because I've just um, besides working with him strictly just for co like courses simply just for class just simply just trying to pass but also I was very interested so being able to work in his lab and not like feel like the pressure being graded, just like this is the work I'm doing, like I'm contributing to like a team's effort and working with the team, like meeting with them every week and just allowing to like, like let my individuality grow in terms of working in the lab. Cause with Dr. Burton, we worked on profiling cyanobacterial blooms using like LCMS and just making like figuring out the new and unknown cyanotoxins in like the algae and Roger Williams. So it was like local. I was able to extract different things and like, and that analyze them and like find things like just being able to do work that wasn't planned out for me through like lab, like week one, week two, week three, like I was going to the pace of just me and my team, well, me and Dr. Burton's team. And Dr. Burton was once again, like a very, very, strong and it's inte like intelligent mentors are part of the college of pharmacy that I'm also grateful grateful for and just the environment of not being judged and being a part of a culture of just like brilliant people was also very like like it was just comforting being able to like sit down and just work at my pace and figure things out so yeah those are all really great stories about undergraduate research, and I've definitely had my fair share of experiences with Dr. Rowley, who's another great um, professor also in MedCam. We miss Dr. Burton every day, um, as he is no longer with this faculty, but um, there's other great people out there to get involved with. And Adetola, you mentioned that you were part of the uh, Rhode Island Inbrae program, but I also just want to throw it out there that there's other research opportunities and fellowships, like you mentioned over the summer, they have the SURF program. Um, so those are other great things to get involved with undergraduate research early. Um, also, you get a bit of funding, so it's always great to have a stipend as well. So um, as you talked about with the curriculum, you uh, 
you all mentioned some electives or uh, core courses that you opted to take that helped your um, you further your advancement in the program. Um, but did any take on a, a secondary major or maybe a minor? I know Tara, you mentioned the honors program. So if any of you have any experiences about that, I'd love to hear more. Yeah, um, I ended up doing the honors program. So the honors program at URI, it's awesome in that it's about, I think, 18 credits that you take in addition to your degree. And it's very easy to integrate into your pharmaceutical sciences curriculum because we're allotted a certain number of electives and courses that we're able to take on the side. And I did my main honors project in the work that I was doing, the chemistry research I was doing, but then I was able to explore a variety of other classes that were not necessarily even related to pharmaceutical sciences, but um, I took a class, I think like on the economics of, um, like a futuristic world, like Star Trek economics. That was a really cool class. Um, I took a course on emerging infectious disease in developing nations. And that was a course that I ended up TAing subsequently. So it gave me some teaching experience. Um, so I loved, you know, kind of taking a little bit of a break from the pharmacology and med chem and metabolism courses that we would take as pharmaceutical sciences students, and then stepping out a little bit to join maybe some of the liberal arts peeps across campus and do that. But I also pursued another minor as well. Um, I did a minor in thanatology, which is the study of death, dying, and bereavement. Again, not fully related to pharmaceutical sciences, but I think was really pivotal for me to understand kind of um, the sobering reality of our, um, of our mortal selves. Um, and it, it was not actually as dark as a course as I make it sound. It was taught by the School of Nursing, integrated with the honors program as well. I really enjoyed it. And again, it was a way for me to step out a little bit from the traditional science courses of the pharmaceutical sciences program and, you know, work a little bit more on my speaking skills, uh, presenting skills, writing skills, and just sometimes sitting back and listening to other people talk. So um, both of those were really, um, I think, pivotal for my curricular experience and being able to make me a little bit more of a well-rounded student. Sounds like a great experience. Um, the honors program is definitely a great way to get your research out there because I believe they have a little colloquium at the end um, where you all share your research projects on a poster. Um, Dean, I see that you are unmuted. Do you have an experience you'd like to share? Sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Maggie. I um I didn't do a set, you know a major or another minor, but I also did honors program. I thought it was a really good experience. I definitely encourage you to. Uh, you know, apply to it if you're like in that in that season or in that place where you can. Um, I really appreciated that they taught the classes um, more about critical thinking rather than just memorizing things to pass an exam. And so I had a really positive experience with that. Specifically, the biochem course taught by Dr. Gregory was super good. Um, you know, I was like a little intimidated because it was like essays and this and that, but I actually had a lot of fun with it because he really you just, you know, had a desire for us to get to know the material, but also think about it and apply it in a different way. And to me, I was able to really just learn a lot better through that. So the symposium was cool too at the end, because yeah, like you were saying, you get to see just what everyone's been working on. It kind of like fired me up to want to pursue that in the future and just get excited by other people's work. And I think being in research, you know, being in the same lab the whole time, I was kind of getting like sick of what I was working on. I was like, I don't really know if I want to do this forever, but one of those symposiums is cool because this kind of reminds me like, oh yeah, science is exciting and things that other people do are cool too. And so being a part of that was, was really sweet. Definitely being in the lab so long, you take for granted the outside space, but when you get out and you realize that science is so much more than the basic lab bench skills, you also have to communicate your work. That's a whole nother thing. And the honors program was definitely a great introduction to that. Um, in regard to minors that are pretty easy to pick on um, or take on with the BSPS major, they have, um, you know, only one more course credit past the course requirements that you're already uh, meant to take with the BSPS program for a minor in biology or chemistry. Um, I opted to take medicinal plants like Tara did, and that honestly, uh, I was surprised, but it, it counted towards the biology minor. So if you're interested in a biology minor, just one more course, um, same thing with chem. I know most people take um, 212 which I believe is, you know, technique related. Um, anybody else have anything to comment on minors, majors? All right, so uh, on a different note, um, what kind of student organizations did you guys get involved in, if any, and they don't have to be just for, uh, within the College of Pharmacy, you can talk about outside stuff too as well. 
Um, well, there I was a part of one organization that I was able to be on the executive board for. It was Uhuru Sasa. Um, and I really enjoyed that because it allowed me to be around of people who, um, like it was just comforting just not being able to be around like school and just work. Like it was a breath of fresh air sometimes um, when I just needed a break from the College of Pharmacy, honestly, and, <laughs> and just school in general. And it allowed me to just have that sort of fun outside that I extremely and highly recommend, especially with like some of the courses that you're taking in um, the College of Pharmacy. But yeah, I was a part of Yuhuru Sasa and I loved it. I was pretty involved with the URI chess club. Um, I grew up playing chess, so I've always loved it, but it's cool being in a space where there are people of different um, skill levels. I think like growing up, I played so much and I always thought I was the best, but then when I joined the chess club, I was not the best. I was far from it, but it just brought so much more joy, you know, winning and losing, learning about what that means in life too. So um, I really loved it. Um, good group of people and I'm pretty sure they still have a chess club, but I'm not positive. So. Yeah, I was an orientation leader um, after my freshman year for the incoming freshman class. So at that time, it was the class of 2020. So it has long since graduated. Um, and I really liked that because it was a way for me to step out from, again, from the College of Pharmacy and join a group of 40 other students from across campus, different majors, different um, graduating years, to be able to usher in the new generation of URI students. Um, and it kind of built a lot of skills, like, you know, tour guiding skills, advising. I actually ended up doing a, like the academic advising for the pharmaceutical sciences majors that were come incoming um, and helping out. I think it was Dr. King at that time doing the academic advising that summer. So I loved it. Um, and I highly recommend it's a great way to get involved with admissions and really build, um, again, your public speaking skills. All very unique opportunities um, and awesome that you all explored avenues outside of the College of Pharmacy. Um, so I, I want to, before we switch gears to, you know, some career questions, um, was there anything that you would have done differently in your undergraduate career? And um, what would what would you have wished to have known, you know, before, you know, where you are now, if that makes sense? or just a pearl of advice for our prospective students? Um, for me personally, I just highly advise, and also this is what I would have done differently, is just connecting with any faculty member, like the beginning, like probably the first day of my sophomore year, I would, I would highly recommend just going to any faculty member, seeing if you could work in their lab or and if you don't want to work in their lab, just seeing if you can get in touch with them, learn about what they do outside of teaching for the College of Pharmacy, just being more in touch on that level rather than just coursework and just lecture work because a lot of the things that are essential for your degree whether or not you want to go to grad school or industry or work is experimental like experimental learning and just having hands-on experience um so that was what I would advise and I wish I would have done that sooner Um, I think my recommendation is be a little bit less grade conscious. Um, I think it's easy for me to say this now, but talking to a version of myself, you know, five, six years ago, I was very focused on trying to maintain a certain GPA. And I think in essence, it limited me even in some of the courses that I decided to take. You know, I tried not necessarily to make my course load a little easier, but I didn't challenge myself, I think, with the level of courses that I wanted to take. Um as pharmaceutical science students, you have this opportunity in your junior and your senior year to take courses that are course coded between, you know, the undergraduate and graduate level. 
And had I realized that, you know, a lot of graduate courses aren't necessarily harder, they just require you to do a little extra critical thinking, I would have taken more of those. I ended up getting really lucky that when I did come back to URI for graduate school, I ended up taking those courses that I had wished I had taken as an undergrad. But I do wish I had been a little bit more bold and a little bit, a bit less, like I said, grade conscious and trying to, you know, maintain a certain GPA, trying not to like overload myself, because I really do think that I did have it in me to have been able to take those courses as an undergrad. So um, you're capable of more than you think. And if a course is offered, for you as an undergraduate to be able to take it um that course was offered with a lot of thought and um it's because they understand and they know that you will be capable of taking that course so definitely take advantage of it yeah so um when i was in bsps it had this like stigma this is four four or five years ago now it had this stigma of like bsps is only for people who can't get into farm d and that like I don't know, it kind of made me feel like I wasn't able to be super confident in my degree. Um, it was hard for me to like talk about it, you know, and I was just kind of weird, but I, I don't know if that's still a thing or if even I put that on myself, but I would just encourage my old, you know, past self to uh, really take ownership and be proud of like where I'm at because everyone's story and path is so different. Um, and it ended up being really great for me, so. Yeah, those are all some great points. Definitely networking, pushing yourself in course coursework, you know, not underestimating your abilities and what um, this program is offering is those are all really good points. Um, so now kind of switching gears, I'd like to hear more about what you're doing day to day as of now in your current role. Um, so if y'all could please describe some day to day responsibilities of your current job or if you're in an academic program, um, please share. Um, so right now I am working, um, before I go back to school in the fall, I am a manufacturing associate at Amgen here in Rhode Island. Um, it's in West Greenwich. It's a biotechnology company, if you got, if anyone's not aware of, and I'm mainly in the upstream and downstream portion of manufacturing, um, more specifically like purification and solution prep. So basically what that means is I'm responsible for with a group of like my team of preparing and making batches of media and buffer for different types of um, cells that Amgen produces for their um, medications or like final product so as like you may know if you didn't know like a lot of the um a lot of drug companies work through a pipeline so every single like um department in a biotechnology company works hand in hand so one day i'm for since i'm solution prep and i'm making either media or buffer for um whether it's the seeds i'm or cells i'm trying to grow or whether it's the cells i'm trying to purify i'm working with qa i'm working with um, PPH or harvesting. I'm working with um, purification. I'm working with people like different departments every day. And every day is not the same, um, which I quickly learned in like my second week. I um, go through like a rotating shift. So at Amgen, it's like 12 hour shifts where you just sit down, work different um, processes like simultaneously. So one minute you're making something and then the next minute the other thing that you made you're sampling and you're analyzing but it's like so it makes the time go faster because I'm always doing something um there's not a minute where I'm not doing something and if I'm not doing something I'm doing something wrong <laughs> um and it's like a fun well fun like if you if you like it it's like a fun environment for me because it allows me to explore the places I didn't like in lab and that's kind of backwards, but like a lot of my friends, I didn't picture myself going in manufacturing at all. A lot of people like, well, a lot of my friends were like, oh, let's just do QA or let's just do sales. And I was like, I mean, like, yeah, but I don't know. Let me just explore like something else and just step out my comfort zone a little because I'm able to do that with this degree. And I definitely don't regret it and I'm happy I'm learning something every day because with manufacturing comes with pharmaceutical side but also engineering so I'm working with a lot of engineering people I'm like working a wrench and I 
I personally never used Narantia a day in my life. Um, so it's just something new I'm learning every day. And it's great, honestly. Cool, yeah. Um, I'm in grad school right now. I'm getting a PhD in pharmacology and uh, I'm in my fifth year. So pretty much wrapping up, I've got probably a year left. Um, and I'm currently working on revisions for my manuscript. So peer reviewed literature. So we submitted it to a journal and they got back with some revision experiments. Um, but yeah, day to day, like it's super great. The campus I'm at, um, University of Colorado, is a grad only campus. So there's no undergrads. So there's no opportunities for TA or anything. But the whole campus and the pharmacology program is really well funded. So my day to day involves really just experimental design, execution, and communication. Um, there's opportunities for conferences, a lot of travel, um, if that's something you'd like. Um, I probably do that only a couple times a year though. Um, the first two years were coursework, and then after that it was just research. And so generally, like Monday, I spend the day um, planning experiments for the week, things that I'm interested in, probably like 30% and then 70% are things I need to do to move my project forward. Um, and then the rest of the week, just, you know, performing those experiments. Um, there's four postdocs in my lab, which is great because it's kind of like waterfall mentorship. Um, I have meetings with my PI, but really the postdocs are super helpful for, they kind of just know everything about everything. So it's great having that. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that it's a, it's a pretty collaborative environment, like in my lab and on my floor. Um, so even though there are scientists that just walk in with their headphones all day, that's a thing, but you also don't have to, that's not been my experience. So, and then yeah, data analysis, um, and then communication through like lab meetings and, and things like that. So. Yeah. So I'm currently a first year medical student. Um, and so like the day-to-day -day for me is like a medical student is uh, go to class and watch lots of lectures on my own time and then attend class discussion. We just finished a very rigorous um, human anatomy unit where we were also dissecting a human cadaver and um, really learning every single part of the human body that there is to learn, which was a very sobering, but eye-opening and incredibly educational experience. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world, but I'm also really glad to just be back in the classroom right now. Um, we're in our cell physiology unit right now, and I have an exam this Thursday. Um, and then after that, we're going to be doing genetics and then metabolism. So old courses actually, and like things that build on stuff that you learn in your pharmaceutical sciences um, curriculum, which is why I really do test them. Um, I really do attribute a lot of my, my success or maybe like ease in my program right now to the foundations that I had. But before I was a medical student, just a few months ago, I was working in um, pharma consulting at an agency in New York. And I think it allotted me an opportunity to see another path that you can pursue other than R&D, like research and development or a more research-based graduate program that you can do with a pharmaceutical sciences degree. Um, so mine was definitely not in the lab. And we worked with pharmaceutical companies who wanted our agency to help create educational materials, whether it was digital or print, to support like new clinical data release or new drug launches. I worked mainly in neurology and oncology sectors. So I was actually working with um, Janssen or Johnson & Johnson's oncology unit. And so I was working on drugs that did, for prostate cancer, bladder cancer, lung cancer, um, and then working with a bunch of PhDs, MDs, and PharmDs to create materials to educate on new clinical data releases. So a couple of the drugs we were working on had new clinical data releases that had launched um, just a few months prior. So being able to gather all of that, make sure everything's FDA compliant, and then really send it out to all of the doctors and prescribers who are going to be prescribing those medications. So it was really nice to see a tangential side of, um, of medicine and pharma versus like what I'm doing today um, right now as a student. Um, but I think it goes to show that there are other avenues that you can take after graduation from pharmaceutical sciences that may not have you in the lab. You could really enjoy being in the lab as a student, but maybe not want to pursue that for the rest of your life um, as a career. And it is totally fine. And um, the skills that you can bring from a pharmaceutical sciences background is so wanted like I, when I was interviewing for my consulting positions like I remember my interviewers saying like no no no, your degree background is exactly what we want because it's a perfect balance of you know giving you all the clinical background and scientific background but also like you can speak and you know like what to do in the lab and so you understand what went behind this drug discovery what went behind this um, clinical trial so it, it was a really nice experience um, I'm glad to be in school now but I wouldn't change that kind of gap year experience for the world either.
those all sound like awesome positions that you all hold right now. Um, um, more towards uh, Adatola, since you are in industry, how was the application process? I mean, you mentioned BPS 250 was instrumental, and I'm sure that was, you know, in part to the CV review and um, interview skills. But do you have any skills to lend to our students online? Um, yeah, so my application process was I started applying for jobs probably like a month before like I graduated um, and I was honestly just applying, making sure I was applying to jobs near my house in Rhode Island, making sure I wanted, I wanted to do industry, but I did apply to a couple QA and QC, but I wanted to do, I wanted to do manufacturing. And like, to be honest, I was kind of scared on my end with my application, mainly because everybody stresses to make sure you have lab experience. And I only had like the inkling of lab experience I had in the spring, but I was kind of just downplaying like in my head because what I did in the spring was a lot of work. And like speaking to like my now boss, like he always like tells me like, no, like you're like, you're fine. Like you did this, you had this course. Like a lot of people who um, apply with different degrees, not like going down on their degrees or a lot of people who's been there for years have to go through training within the company to figure out what they're doing as well so like for me I already had like as she, like um she said before I already had that foundation in like the short amount of time like I did so um applying to Amgen I really like good credits to the BPS 250 class because my resume was well written as my boss said and well concise and like show highlighted my skills highlighted what I could what I can do and it even showed like my potential and what I like well also what I can do um and just the interview skills and like talking to the different people I connected on LinkedIn who came to the BPS 250 class because I made sure that a couple of people who came to that class, I'm going to connect with you on LinkedIn. Even if you don't remember me, I'm going to connect with you. Um, so just like talking to them and networking like that really allowed me to be comfortable in my interview process. And it showed that not only am I comfortable working with um with these job responsibilities and like my educational background, but I'm also well at working with different people. Like I'm, I'm okay with working in a team because a lot of jobs in manufacturing, I'm always never, I'm like never working by myself. I'm always working with someone else. Even if you work there for 20 plus years, you're always gonna have someone to work like with you because it's safety. Like everybody wants to be safety and compliant. And with that comes just working in teams. So they stress a lot with communication and being able to um, be a team player. So I was definitely grateful to like have those skills, I guess, under my belt and like have a fresh pair of eyes, like how I just graduated, like the things that I thought were going to be my, my fault were actually like my highlights, like. So I'm very like grateful for like being young and just graduated. I'm like, I'm like eager to work. Like companies love that. Like they love when someone's eager. They're like, they love when someone is like ready to go like head in. And I was quite literally before I graduated, I told myself I need a job because <laughs> I want to take a year off. I need a job. So like the way I was just so eager to work, well, I still am, but, but I was just so eager to work, eager to apply. Like they love that. So, and eager to learn, especially like telling them that yes even though I have this I'm very much there's a huge like room for me to learn and to grow like in all aspects of my career so yeah yeah and it sounds like you're getting a lot of great development at the company too um more uh, questions for Dean and Tara um you're getting development in academic programs um why are you pursuing higher degrees um what's the end goal there future career directions for y'all yeah, um, I actually apologize. I have to hop off, but um, it was really great, you know, being a part of this. Thank you so much for the invite. I'll just drop my email address if anyone has any other questions. So thanks. Thank you, Dean. And that leaves you, Tara. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I mentioned a little earlier that I'd wanted to pursue um, medicine since I was in high school. And so um, 
if you want to be a doctor, um, fortunately or unfortunately, you have to spend a lot of time in school. So it really was a no brainer. I had to go to medical school. Um, I didn't anticipate the the journey that I had along the way. So most students will not most, but they, they, you know, there's a good strong amount of students who will do four years of undergrad, take maybe a year off. Sometimes they don't, and then they go straight into medical school. And I think I graduated in 2019. So if you know what happened the year after with a pandemic, um, that can kind of explain as to why there was a little bit of a delay of why I started medical school um, in 2023. But the journey that I think I've had along the way has been really pivotal to really cementing exactly why I want to be a physician. Um, we need more physicians. And so I, I, again, like I said, because I knew that I wanted to go to medical school, I kind of really tailored my path through undergrad, even the courses that I took, I made sure I took all my pre-med requirements, I made sure that I attended my advising and developed um, uh, the right connections and mentors that I needed to help me write good letters of rec for medical school, I was volunteering um, cl clinically um, in there's a lot that goes into, I think, uh, medical school admissions. But like, what I'm trying to say is that um, URI really did help me in that aspect. And then subsequently, as in my you know post undergraduate years, working as is a graduate student, um, being a graduate student, doing graduate student research, working um, on the campus in the scope of being a grad student was also quite helpful. And then after that, working in pharma consulting. So I chose to pursue higher education. I think. Um, because almost I was forced to, but I really enjoyed the journey along the way and um, kind of tailoring that that journey to really give me the peak amount of intellectual stimulation that I think I crave. I love learning so much. I think that's why I really enjoy medical school. There's no sleep involved in medical school, but there's lots of learning that is done along the way. So it, it has um, helped balance that out for me. Definitely. We, and we never stop learning no matter what capacity. That's awesome. Um, well, you know, maybe to end on, I'll open it up to um, anybody you want to throw some extra questions in the chat, please feel free to do so. Um, kind of to wrap up my uh, questions, I was just wondering, um, what's your favorite or most unique part of your current position or job? And do you have any fun stories that you remember from URI, um, academic or otherwise, that you would like to share? Kind of a two-part question, I guess. I promise we're thinking, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite all right. And students, like I said before, feel free to feel free to ask your own questions. <laughs> um. Okay. So, the answer to the question of what's my favorite part of my job is um. There's like a couple things. So, like, I'm the only female on my team, and it it's so cool working with men like um in terms of like working with being new to working with like my hands technically <laughs> um like working with wrenches working with jumpers working with um, <laughs> like holsters wearing a hard hat um like doing stuff like that day to day like where I'm learning how to like I learned how to put on a screen like a screen like like um hard hat the other day so like <laughs> and it's just funny because they asked me oh you don't know how to do that and in my head I'm like yeah I, I, I do but somebody definitely told me senior year of high school I mean senior year of college to put on a hard hat but like I don't know like those like small things like that is definitely what I enjoy and just working with like huge tanks because I feel like I'm in like a movie I feel like I'm in a simulation just working with like like big industry things is so cool to me um but my favorite memory from college I guess like what I miss from college is just being able to like at 2 a.m or like 12 a.m like call one of my best friends and like say I need a treat and then go to insomnia like that's what I miss like I miss <laughs> being able to like 12 30 go get a treat from insomnia and then just drive around and eating a cookie so that's yeah that's so real <laughs> thank you for sharing yeah so I think my favorite part right now of being a medical student I think is the exposure to so many different like 
interesting clinical cases. So last week I um, ended up skipping class for this. Um, so I could go across the street to the Johns Hopkins hospital to um, shadow advanced endoscopy. And so I got to watch a doc. I had to put on like full lead and full leg gear to get into this because we, they were using like x-ray machines and stuff while they were imaging during this procedure. And they put a scope down on somebody's throat to go into the stomach. And then they deployed an ultrasound and used that ultrasound to image the pancreas through the lining of the stomach to test for pancreatic cancer. It was the coolest thing ever. I don't know. I was mind blown. And so standing in the back of that room, obviously like I like I know what the organs we're working with. Do I know how to use any of the machinery? Absolutely not. I stand in the back. I do not make a sound. I do not get in any of the doctors, nurses, technologists way, but it was just so cool to watch. And then a couple of days later, I also skipped class for this. Um, and I showed up at like 6.30 in the morning to the interventional radiology unit that was also at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. And I watched a doctor repair um, an atrial venous malformation in somebody's lungs. So where the, like the H, the art, the, arteries in the veins were abnormally attached to each other, which was causing um, a lot of the oxygenated blood to get like shunted into the deoxygenated part. So it can actually cause like hypoxia or like ischemia in the lung tissue. Um, and I watched the doctor like thread like a catheter through somebody's vein in their leg all the way up through the heart into the lungs and then like deploy a, like a solution to like help like solidify it. And it was absolutely amazing and instead of doing something like an open heart surgery this patient then you know they just get a tiny little bit of a stitch like in the incision that they had where the the catheter went into their leg they'd be up and moving probably within a few hours so just being able to see like how much technology has come to be able to make like things that would have been like an open heart surgery possible now and like you know getting people back up and moving and the type of technology that can be like used like there was a rotating x-ray machine that was going around that was taking images the entire time and so we were also like dressed up fully in lead uh while the doctor was doing that and just it was amazing absolutely amazing so that is my favorite part of my day to day is just the exposure to all the things that i could potentially one day do with my md being a first year med student i can do absolutely none of that right now and so it'll probably be another like you know five to ten years but it's really nice to see that different avenues I can take. And I think my favorite memory though from URI, um, and it probably is just something like um, that I also miss, is that I went to URI with my sister. So she's two years younger than me. So we spent a good few years on campus together. And she always used to save me a spot at this old cafe called Bagels that was up in the Emporium. I think they've replaced it now with like Providence Bagel or something like that of that nature. But she would always save a spot for me and we would sit there for hours studying and people watching and ordering bagel after bagel, coffee after coffee. And then like if we had to go either one of us to class, we'd save each other a seat. Um, and so it was just such a nice memory to be able to study with somebody like, you know, like my sister, it was wonderful. Um, and now being in Baltimore and she's still back up in Rhode Island, I do miss that. So it's just like a fond memory to think back at URI back when I was young and had not been accepted to med school and had no idea if I was going to be accepted to med school. So it was those humble beginnings. We always remember those the most for sure. And having family at the same school, that would be awesome. I unfortunately don't have that <laughs> to relate. Um, and I agree, Dominique, that does sound pretty cool. The catheter going in through the leg. I don't even know how that would be managed. 